Hi, I'm Bill Sargas, and this uh, Photoshop Portrait Pro 18 tutorial, uh, we're, we're going to try to do an edit that, that is just kind of like the, the natural look edit. The, uh, some of the tutorials I've done, I've kind of pushed the image towards sort of a kind of a, a glamorous look. In this one, um, I told the model, I said, I want to, I want to do a, uh, a, a, an edit that is just kind of like the natural look, not anything real, you know, real fancy or real glamorous. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that and we're using the Portrait Pro 18 um, plugin for Photoshop. So I've already um, cropped the image and I have cleaned up most of the um, skin imperfections, not just kind of a quick touch up of the, of the more prominent imperfections. And I just wanna kinda do this last one. There's uh, just a little residue here of something, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna, I've got my healing brush. I always like my healing brush to be, this is just the Photoshop uh, spot healing brush. And I always want my brush to be a little bit larger than the imperfection. And I'm just gonna click that. Now, if you look real close, you can see there's a little artifacting around where I, where I, I, I um, touched up the, the thing. I, I'm gonna leave it that way on purpose because I, I, I'm, I'm, my point I want to make here is that you don't have to do a, a great deal of work on the skin. Just I always just try to take the, the major imperfections out with uh, Photoshop's healing brush before I let the Portrait Pro plugin do what it is going to do. I'm going to launch the plugin, um, going into my filters, going down to the plugins, and I hit the Portrait Pro. Confession, I don't know the difference between those two, the one with the dots and without the dots. I actually think they do exactly the same thing. I don't know why they appear twice in my menu. So Portrait Pro launches. The first thing it does is identify faces. One of the challenges in this picture is going to be uh, the model has glasses. Portrait Pro handles that very well and even has some logic if you do a lot of face sculpting to uh, restore the glasses to their original shape. I'm going to identify the model as a female, click that, and it does the thing, it's put in the control points. Um, right off I can see there's a, a couple of little spots where I'm going to have to adjust them around the cheek line and almost always have to adjust the eyebrows. Um, I have a mouse with a, with a scroll wheel and the wheel will zoom in. If I want to move the image around on the screen I use it in the after window. If I click on the, this window it's expecting me to move a control point. So I, I'm, zooming, I'm zooming in, dragging, and I'm going to grab this control point right here, pull it down, and it, it um, figured out what I was trying to accomplish. I feel like there was something on this side too. Yeah, pull this down. This is kind of giving it an idea where the contours of the face is, and that will help it uh, apply um, shadowing and those sorts of things. And so there is that. Bring this down, let's look at the mouth while I'm in the area. Pull this one over just a little bit. I've said in other tutorials, I'll say again here, the time you spend getting your control points in the right place to start with um, is just is really vital. It allows the software's logic to do what it does and do it very well. That point goes on the septum. One of the things I do is almost always have to deal with eyebrows. Um, I feel like they, that would be the one growing edge I would say to their developers is your, your eyebrow identification logic still has some room to improve. And, you, and once you get the control point set, um, zoom back out and we're ready to, to begin. It has already uh, applied a default and it's really, it's really a pretty good default um, set of controls. I could save this and be happy with it, but I, I feel like I wanna go a little bit more in depth into uh, this tutorial. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going into my presets and reset to original. I'm resetting everything back to the original. Back to my controls. 
um, for face sculpting. I'm, I'm going for a, a, a natural look. I'm going for a natural look. And I'm really pretty much going to just ignore all of these. Uh, I, I don't really want to change the contours of her face or anything like that. I'm, I'm going to just pretty much leave these alone. If I go back to the standard, you can see it moves things around a little bit. Um, but for the, going for the natural look, I'm going to just keep the, the face sculpt off. I am definitely using skin smoothing. That's one of the, the main reasons I started looking for these types of, uh, of plugins was to smooth skin. I'm just going to run the master fader up to um, about 20 because I saw kind of like round numbers. And it goes in and, and it takes care of that little spot that we left here that we didn't really worry about is mostly gone uh, at this point with the the uh, the the logic of Portrait Pro um, sharpening can sharpen the image or not. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening. I think I'll just do like 15. And then trim eyebrows is it's going to kind of catch some of these uh, outside the lines and kind of de-emphasize them. And if the back to the sizing and the placement of the uh, control points, that has a huge effect on this. Um, take out the a few lines around the mouth leaving texture alone and I'm going to call that done with the skin, done with the skin. I'm going to jump down to eyes, I'm going to turn eyes on and I'm going to find sharpen, sharpen eyes. It has the ability to to change all of these various in inner settings. Um, I'm just going to, to sharpen around here a little bit with the glasses it's not going to be as noticeable um, and then I think we can call that done brighten the iris let's see if that works with the glasses and it does you can see the the iris comes in a little bit stronger again we're going for a natural look uh, so we want to be very subtle with these things and then we'll call that done with the eyes this was the end of the day when this picture was taken. This was taken during Photography Club. And uh, I am going to saturate the lips a little bit. Um, I don't want to overdo it. I just want to bring them up a little bit beyond zero. So um, again, going for the natural look. We don't want to overdo any of the, um, the changes but just bring the lips in a little bit more and then we will, um, um, I, I could darken them or lighten them. I'm not gonna change that, uh, just a little bit darkening. The contrast is going to bring in the variances within the lips themselves, the lights and the darks within the lips. Uh, it, it sort of enhances texture or de-enhances texture. Leave that one alone. I will sharpen the whole mouth area just a very little bit. And we will say we are now done. I'm not going to change the hair. Uh, I am not going to do anything with the background. Um, but I am, I am going to do a little bit with the vignette. So I want a vignette a little bit around here. So I will find my vignette setting which is at the bottom of the picture settings. I'm going to go back at the very end and do the lighting just uh, to see if there's anything we want to do with that. In order to set vignette, I always turn hardness on to max, and that shows me exactly where the vignette is. Um, and then I have the, the radius of the vignette. And since I know I'm going to fade it, I'm going to put it pretty close uh, and then I can offset it vertically and horizontally uh, in order to you know, place it where I want in the picture. Now I'm going to go back to 
uh, the amount of the vignette and the hardness. So I'm going to bring this back down um, and now I'm going to change my hardness down into around 25. So it's, it's just kind of knocking down the corners just a little bit. And having done that, I'm going to go, I'm going to go into brightness and I'm going to boost my brightness just a very little bit to bring the middle of the picture back up um, and get a nice picture there. The, the other setting that I'm going to look at is skin lighting and coloring. Um, if I turn this on, what it wants to do is artificially change the lighting. It wants to make the, the, the lighting, uh, and, and it, it allows a, an awful lot of options with lighting. Um, I, I had her lit fr front on the um, natural light from the hallway. There's a, she's facing a, a door, and it's, it's kind of far away, so it's really diffuse lighting. So the lighting would would be around here. If I wanted to change that, I can move this around, and if I want to make it even more dramatic, um, I can move the lighting around and and change the, the appearance a great deal. There's also modeling and fixed lighting, which has a, a huge impact on the way the skin looks, and to, to the extent that. Um, People sometimes are like, wow, that doesn't even look like me anymore. And as a matter of fact, it doesn't. Um, I'm turning those off completely. Going back to where the light would have been. My, my preference as a general rule is to let the Portrait Pro lighting go where the natural lighting was. Unless I'm trying to overcome something and bring out something that was underexposed for one reason or another. Um, if I were going for a more dramatic look, I might put the light on, on the side of her face here where it is a little bit more lit. If I wanted to really over uh, emphasize the dramatic effect, I might turn this on and put, put this light um, over here. And then I could even bring the, the shadows down even more to bring in more of the drama. Um, I am going to put it off to the side a little bit and I'm going to reduce the contrast just to kind of bring in uh, lighting in general. And I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. The psychology of our of eyesight, we expect the light to come from above. And so when, when the light comes from somewhere else, it's dramatic because our eyes are not expecting it to be there. Our psychology is not expecting it to be there. To be there. If we're doing a, a natural look, um, so if, if the light was actually here, I'm just going to maybe move it up a little bit and over just, just a little bit to bring in a little of that, uh, what, what Portrait Pro Clock calls the kick close this tab. So what have I have done in this picture is I've done skin smoothing, I have done lighting, I have done eyes. Uh, all I did with the eyes was sharpen them a little bit. Um, I am going to, I'm going to leave the reflections in the glasses uh, because I'm, I'm not trying to make this look like a glamour page. Um, so I have a picture where I did the vignette. I did a little bit uh, on the mouth to, to uh, darken the lips and saturate them just a little bit and then those things. I'm going back to picture and I'm going to um, warm this with temperature. I'm going to warm it just a very little bit and I'm going to bring vibrance up just a little bit. I take some of the, the starkness away. And is there anything else I want to do? I think I am done. So this, uh, we, we started with uh, the, so we started with this and we've done very little to it to make uh, any, any real changes except to enhance a few things that were there and smooth out uh, a few imperfections. Um, change the, the color and the tone a little bit and we're gonna call it done going back to Photoshop. It applies the changes to the layer that I was working on and if I want to go back and forth I can just go back into my history. Um, 
As a, as a rule, typically, I will create a new layer to apply this to. Uh, in, this, in this tutorial, I did not. I applied it to the default. Um, I'm going to watermark this and put it on Instagram. I'm ready, ready to go with this. So that's it. That is uh, a quick run through with the um, uh, Portrait Pro 18 tutorial, trying to get a nice, natural looking edit and uh, without over glamorizing or changing anything drastically. I uh, hope this was helpful to you. Please click the like button, subscribe to the channel. Besides the tutorials, I do quite a few life lesson motivational videos. I also have some uh, videos I'm doing with some students who are producing their own videos uh, for, for, and I'm putting them on my channel until they get their own channels set up. If you enjoyed this, please, again, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications, leave me a comment, question, or a suggestion. Um, that is all for this tutorial. I will see you in the next one.